the biggest predictor for low back pain is have you had low back pain before? Meaning once you've had that first episode, you're in this new risk category of it happening again and again. Now, the good news is there are things which we are about to explore that you can do to make your spine more resilient and protected. Hi there everyone, I am Dr. Jeffrey O'Gwen, chiropractor and owner of Embody Performance and Recovery. And today, we're going to take a look at the deepest stabilizing muscles along the spine called the multifidus and their relationship with recurring low back pain. The best place for us to start is to understand that we have layers of back muscles. And as we peel back those layers, we get to the deepest called the multifidus. Now, the significance of these muscles is that when they are strong and well-conditioned, they play a critical role in segmental stability. And what that means is these muscles protect each individual vertebra from shifting and shearing. So these muscles essentially play a critical role in protecting the spine. The problem is that these muscles decondition at an exaggerated and accelerated rate in people who begin to experience bouts of low back pain. So the cycle will look something like this. You have a low back injury, some low back pain, that reduces the impulses of the nervous system to fire to the multifidus. That results in some atrophy, deconditioning of those multifidus muscles, which are the really important spine stabilizers. And then you end up with this cycle of susceptibility, less stability, more injury, and that reoccurring low back pain. Now, there are different ideas and theories as to how and why this happens, but the reality is that it does happen. So I think it makes sense for us to turn our attention to the things that you can do about it. There are two approaches. The first way is to stimulate those muscles or the surrounding joints to reflexively re-engage those nervous system pathways. And that's usually done through things like spinal manipulation, chiropractic care, electroacupuncture, and a wide variety of manual therapies. And the second approach should be no surprise. It is to engage those muscles, intentionally engage those muscles through specific types of exercises. So let's talk about those exercises, but also understand that it doesn't have to be one or the other. Uh, for some people, the best approach is actually to combine, stimulate those surrounding areas and do the active physical therapy rehabilitation exercises and have that combined approach. So to strengthen the multifidus, there are two different approaches of exercises. One or more of your body weight isometric holds and the other approach is to actually make that muscle more robust, more resilient through loaded exercises, uh, strength training types of exercises. And there are advantages and disadvantages to both. Uh, on one end of the spectrum, the more body weight and isometric holds, they are usually safer to begin for a lot of people, especially if you're inexperienced or you haven't done much exercise before, you live more of a sedentary lifestyle. However, some people will argue it doesn't go far enough to really build the robustness and the resiliency of that muscle. And so for some people, they need to eventually progress to more strength training exercises. But for now, let's take a look at the phase one exercise. Let's talk about the bird dog first. This is the classic example of an exercise to be done for the low back. Uh, you'll notice you start off on your hands and your knees and extend one leg out and then you want to extend the other arm out. Now the other arm is optional. Sometimes you can just do that one leg and it's really important to have what is called a neutral spine, meaning you don't want to overarch your back or overextend your back because as you overextend, you're actually using more of the superficial muscles along the back and you're not necessarily getting the depth of those multifidus muscles uh, that you would otherwise if you pull your pelvis a little bit more into what's called a posterior pelvic tilt. And when you do that, you get more of this co-activation of multiple core muscles and you target the multifidus a little bit better. Some other things to consider is your weight. You don't wanna shift your body weight too far 
uh, under that supporting knee. When you do that, you're not going to get a sufficient activation of the correct muscles. So you really wanna lean your, your entire body away from that support knee. And you also want to be aware that you don't wanna rotate your pelvis too much so that your whole body is turned. You really want your entire pelvis to face the floor with that leg extended. And then the final thing you could use is a diaphragm resistance device. Uh, there is a significant amount of research that shows doing core stability exercises while also putting some resistance on the diaphragm has a compound effect and it makes those exercises even more effective. And so the next exercise we'll look at is another classic, which is just called a bridge. So when you bridge up, you could start off using two legs or have both of your legs down. And then what you want to do again is be aware of the overarching. Some people have a tendency to really overarch their low back. So what I like to do is bring my hips and my pelvis up and then I flatten in between my shoulder blades down to the floor, which allows me to keep my hips and pelvis high. But when I drop the shoulder blade down to the floor a little bit, it takes that excessive arching out of my low back. From there, if this is something that you can do, if you do a single leg, meaning bring one leg out, that will actually put more force through not only your hip muscles, but those multifidus muscles as well. You're using those deep spine stabilizers as actual stability muscles when you bring that one leg out. You'll notice it's much more challenging. And the same idea here, you want to make sure that you don't drop your pelvis. So you want to make sure you bring that pelvis up and keep it very neutral as you're holding that single leg. And a third example of just an easy body weight exercise is something called a reverse hyper. And what that means is that you're going to have your body supported on something. In this case here, I'm using a stability ball and I'm supported on that stability ball and I bring my legs out. I'm really reaching. Now, to do this one, it's helpful to have something to hold on to that's very supported. So I'm using a stall bar here, but you could find anything that you could grab onto that is stable and bring those legs out. And you want to make sure that you're really breathing. There's a tendency to hold your breath. And again, as I mentioned previously, using deep diaphragmatic breathing or even diaphragm resistance devices, it can help uh, with some synergy of getting more muscles involved, especially those deep intrinsic core muscles involved. And then a final example for a body weight exercise is another classic, which is just your back extensions. So I'm using this Roman chair here and just going up and down the number uh, how many times you should do it is really going to depend on you, your condition. So, you know, make sure you can so consult with your own healthcare practitioner. But ideally, you might be shooting for the world of 10 to 15, take a break. Um, some people may be less than that. Some people may obviously be more than that. And now let's take a look at a couple of examples for some traditional strength training movements to strengthen the multifidus muscle. Uh, and I'm gonna start with the deadlift. The deadlift is an excellent choice for really heavily engaging those multifidus muscles to make them stronger and more robust. However, keep in mind, it is a double-edged sword. If you have a current spine injury, if you're not well conditioned enough, if you start too soon, if you lift too heavy, even with the perfect form, you can still injure yourself. So I highly recommend consulting with somebody before you do these. If you're new to these, if you haven't done these before, if you're just now coming out of a, of a back injury. Some key points with the deadlift is you want, again, what's called a neutral spine. So you'll notice that my spine is very straight. I'm not rounding my spine as if, in, as if flexing forward, but I'm also not overextending my spine. I'm keeping it very neutral, very upright. There are three points of contact that you could have against a dowel rod. That would be the back of your head, somewhere in between your shoulder blades, 
and what's called your sacrum, pretty much your tailbone region. And then another classic example for strength training could just be a traditional squat. Squats are an excellent way to build leg strength, but they equally challenge the core, a lot of core muscles. You've got to balance this weight on your shoulders, so you're getting a lot of core muscle engagement. And if, you're, if you keep that neutral spine that we've been talking about, you're also going to get a significant activation of those multifidus muscles. So although these are known as exercises that some people will hurt themselves with, if done responsibly and not trying to overdo it, they can actually be great exercises to strengthen the spine. You just wanna make sure you've got good form, good technique, and you're not lifting too heavy. So as always, I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, encourage me to make more videos. Give us the thumbs up to like this video or share this video or subscribe to our channel.